Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show brought to you by Datastax Academy, where we bring you the latest news and interview technical experts to help you succeed at building large scale distributed systems. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show. I'm Gabe Gilardi, a technical evangelist here at Datastax, and this is Holden from Google. Thanks. And so let's talk. I want to I hear about Spark 3. Let's like dig into Spark 3. What can you tell me about what's coming with Spark 3? Awesome. So uh, it's hard to say what exactly is going to be in Spark 3 because obviously it's an open source project. Um, and, and we haven't even super decided like when we're going to start making Spark 3. Okay. Um, but there's there's a bunch of interesting issues which are sort of tagged for Spark 3. Um, and I think there's Spark 3 sort of is going to give us this opportunity to reevaluate a lot of the things that we've done um, in the SQL and the data set space especially. Um, and also the ML space. Uh, oh. The ML APIs are, are have served us very well so far. Um, but I think we we really there's a bunch of things in them that are sort of missing that we need to fix. Okay, can you talk about um, what any of those are? Or is that still getting? Oh into no no! I mean like it's I mean the things I can talk about are not necessarily the things that we'll end up fixing. But <laughs> you know they're they're things that I think we should fix. Um, and I, I have some level of input by virtue of being willing to write code. Okay. Um, and merge it. And so one of the things which we've really struggled with is online serving for our okay. RML models. Um, and I think. Uh, there's been a lot of resistance to sort of changing that API because we, if we add things to do online prediction to the existing API, we're going to break the other models that have been created by uh, sort of third parties. And that's okay. not a thing you want to do in a minor release. It's no. a thing you want to yeah. do in a, in a big release. So I think that's one of the things that we can sort of expect in Spark 3 is better support for online model serving, okay. Okay. Um, which is, to me, really exciting. Um, we're, we're laying the framework now, right? They're like... DB has been amazing, has been doing a lot of work on the local linear algebra stuff, which we need to do the online serving. But the API changes are just fundamentally going to have to wait okay. there. Um, the dataset API, I think, uh, is, is a really interesting API, and I think it's, it's very good. Um, but there's still cases where people are having to jump back to the RDD APIs to get okay. their work done. Yep. Uh, and I think, essentially, we're probably going to sit down and try and really make sure we, we cover as many of those cases as we can. Uh, some of that stuff is, is going to you know continue to happen in the 2.x time frame, right? Okay. Like one of the big cases with the data set API is like iterative algorithms like machine learning have some performance problems because of the way how we do query planning. And we can, we can continue to improve that within minor version releases. Okay. Yeah. Um, but like a big rewrite there would probably be part of a a larger change. Um, on the Python API side, you know, there's the vectorized UDF since Spark 2.3 that's going in. That's fine. Okay. But I think we don't have necessarily uh, the same support for doing that for RDDs and okay. other things like that. And we might start investigating, like selectively applying this here. Um, there's some interesting stuff around sort of uh, trying to turn bytecode into things that Spark is more capable of working with or, okay. or being able to understand some of the bytecode, um, which is essentially, admittedly, it's kind of a mad scientist project. It's yeah, like, yeah. I wish to make an optimizer over a previously compiled language. <laughs> yes, my pretties. Um, and uh, we might succeed at that, we might not. But I think that's that's another kind of thing, which is like, when it's a mad science project, like we, we have to get the science at least looking like it's not gonna burn everything down before right, right. we can put it in. But uh, that's not a thing that I would expect in a minor version release either. Okay. Um, yeah. That's, okay, so you're blowing my mind a little bit, honestly, because that is a lot of stuff. Well, I that mean, is... right, like if you're, so there's there's this sort of mentality if we're if we're gonna change the world, yeah. we might as well make it worth it, right? Like I'm gonna break your application anyways. Yeah. I might as well do all of the things I wanted to do. That's a good point. Um, I mean, only obviously like we're not gonna break your application for the sake of breaking it. Yeah. But like, um, it, it makes a lot more sense to do it 
in in one sort of tearing the bandage off. Okay. No, no, um, I think that, that makes a lot of sense. So, okay, you got all this stuff. You're going to break all these things, right? In a good way. In a good yeah, way. in a good way. you're making a big major change here. So when's it going to happen? Wait, <laughs> do you have a timeline here you can give us? <laughs> I mean, so that, that's that's a that's a really good question. And I have no answer. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I mean, Spark 3 will happen eventually, um, obviously. Uh, I don't think it's going to be like Pearl 6. Um, okay. So I predict it'll happen before my death. Um, <laughs> but... You know, it's it's probably not going to happen soon. People are still debating. Um, so even though you think this is a lot of like big important breaking changes, mm -hmm. uh, there is debate over if these changes are important enough to be worth doing. Right? Okay. Like, okay. Sure. Not all this stuff may be actually on the plate to do, but you're you're definitely going to take a look at them and kind of see which ones are relevant or not. Or... Well, no, it's more like if I'm going to break your APIs, right? Like, I want to make sure I've. I'm giving you enough benefit, right? So okay. if the benefit that you get from those set of things that I'm doing isn't big enough, then let's hold off okay. until we get to something even more important, yeah. right? Like, um, you know, there is... So, I mean, this is... Honestly, it's not likely to get into Spark 3, but there is, for example, one of the places where, where it could make more sense is there's talk about making the ML APIs type safe. And this is... This is a little sort of um, out in left field, okay? Right, but like if we if we succeeded at that, like that that would be a really important big change, right? Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. and that would be a lot easier to sell to people as like, yeah, this is going to be painful, but like the time for the pain is now. Yeah, um, and it's it's all about selling people on uh, pain. Yeah, um, which yeah if you can help hard. them relieve some of the pain, even though they have to make a change, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So is there is there anything in particular? Like, what would you change? Like, if you had a magic wand, what would you change? What yeah. You um, so if I had a magic wand, I would switch us into using a shared memory buffer between all of the different languages. Um, okay. And we're getting a lot closer to that being a reality uh -huh. rather than like... I've had too much vodka, and now I'm talking about like API design decisions. Um, <laughs> realistically, it's it's actually Scotch, but um, you know, I, I think that's uh, possible with Arrow, um, and and we'll probably start to see this slowly. Um, but if I if I had a magic wand, we we do it like this year, and that would be awesome. Okay. And then we could just like. Have these shared memory buffers, ship them off to the GPU, we could do all sorts of crazy things, and I would be super excited. Uh, yeah, so what kind of, I mean, so from that particular case, if you had that wand, like, and, and it was actually feasible and you, you tried to do that, like, do you have any, I'm, I'm going to go back to your time frame thing, do you have any idea, like, <laughs> Like is that something? Is that like if you were able to do it, would that be like years out, or is it is it something? No, that... no. I think that's that's. So I mean, if I had a magic wand, we'd be talking now. Yeah. Because like of I have course. a fucking magic. Of uh, course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, because I have a magic wand. Very special, um, nice, energetic magic magic wand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> super magic. Um, but like, given that I don't have a magic wand, I think that this might happen in the next. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm faced with the traditional software engineering oh, decision of like, as soon as I say a timeline, I I, I am screwed. Yeah, um, I understand. So like, in the next year or two, could be maybe. Yeah, or something. Like I think I think we'll we'll see limited implementations of it this year. Okay. And I think okay, fully maybe two plus, okay. but I think sooner rather than later. Um, okay. No, I don't know. But. I also thought I didn't have to learn Fortran, so... No. You having to dig into Fortran with this? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. I mean, I'm not. Oh. That's someone else's job. <laughs> um, but, like, underneath the hood, right, if you want to make weird vectorized operations on columnar data, uh, it, it turns out that there's a whole bunch of that code, uh, but it's all written in Fortran. That's and Wow. Yeah. I, I spent two days trying to call a hello world in Fortran, and so that gives you an idea of my qualifications to yeah, work yeah. on this problem, uh, which are limited at best. So, yeah, I can't say that I have any Fortran in my in my background either. So I'm I'm there with you. No, but that's fun. That's fun that that's there. So all right, we've talked about all these different things that are going on. It sounds like there are a ton of changes coming with Spark Three. 
out of all of those things though, is there anything in particular that you are just totally stoked about that you're like so happy that this one particular change is coming or something? Yeah. I mean, honestly, um, I'm, I'm not super certain which of the Python changes are going to make it. I, I think the one which is most likely going to make it that I'm really excited about is the model serving. I think we really, we really need to improve that, and it's really exciting to see the work happening there. Okay. Um, and I think it's it's going to it's going to save so much effort for so many people because right now everyone that I talk to has essentially written their own model serving code. Okay. And for some reason, no one's willing to open source it because like hmm. eh, eh, politics, yeah. or maybe not politics, but like you know, model serving code tends not to be your prettiest code, and then you feel bad about it, and you're like, oh, I just want to fix it a little bit before I share it, and then that never happens. Yeah. Um, and so the fact that we're gonna like just just deal with it head on is is really exciting to me. That's cool. Um, and then you know it'll mean like the like two person shops don't have to waste all their time on this; they can just you know have a party. Okay. Um, I'm also really excited about an opportunity to update my books and sell more copies because uh, like dollar bills, yo. Okay. Dollar fifty a book. <laughs> I need to start writing some books then. I see uh, I'm missing something here. I uh, yeah no. <laughs> well, I mean. Are you currently paid below minimum wage? No, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, okay. So then writing a book is maybe not the great ROI yeah. uh, system for you. Um, That's great. But updating a book, yeah, because then you can sell new copies with, like, way less work. That, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's my hope. So you should all buy both the copies that are available today. I love it. And the new copies that are available whenever we finally get around to releasing Spark 3. Nice. Whatever. Right, so thank you again, Holden. It was awesome having you on the show. And thanks, everyone, for watching another episode of the Distributed Data Show. Thank you for joining us again for the Distributed Data Show. We love your feedback, so go to the Distributed Data Show page on Datastax Academy and tell us what you think. You can also find us on the Datastax Academy YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get great podcasts. While you're there, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.